Let's go and take a look at this one. So again, if we want to eliminate the parameter, want to eliminate the parameter, again, we're going to have to use the same thing. We don't want to solve for t, right? That doesn't work for this one. We want to use our Pythagorean identity, which is, again, cosine of, again, it's theta squared plus sine squared of theta equals 1. But again, guys, in this case, we're not using theta, though. We're using the variable t. And you guys are OK with me changing out the t. Like, we could use alpha instead of theta, right? Now we're just using t as our, as our parameter. So let's go ahead and solve for x. So when I solve for x, I'm sorry, solve for t, sorry, cosine of t. When I solve for cosine of t, I get x over 2. When I solve for sine of t, I get y over 3. So we can now replace our cosine with x um, divided by 2. So this gives me x over 2 squared plus y over 3 squared. So therefore, this gives us x squared over 9 plus y, I'm sorry, x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Do you think this is still a circle again? Well, doesn't it look like, remember, x and y, like on a distance, doesn't, like, isn't x and y being impacted differently? Yeah. A circle is going to be perfectly circular, right? I mean, it's going to be, the x and y's are going to be like proportional, like to each other. You can see here, my x and my y's are actually are being impacted differently by different scalars, right? They're being divided by different numbers. Yeah. So, so this is actually going to take on an oval shaped, or mathematically what we call an ellipse. And we can also say in it's an ellipse. And since um, what's actually happened is it's actually a vertical ellipse. So it's actually going to be vertically stretched. It's going to be vertically stretched. Now you might say, well, I'm not really sure about that. And again, I'm not concerned. Um, the main thing is understanding the vertical or just understanding the ellipse portion.